and learning in the new normal require future skills, including innovation skills that will enable our students to create solutions for the changing demand of Industry 4.0. Through this video, we will describe effective STEM practices developed with the support from Simeo STEM Ed Center. We will showcase approaches in integrating computational thinking into STEM lessons. And we will share how we conducted online professional development trainings on this set of materials during the COVID-19 pandemic. In STEM lessons, students often get to work on a challenge or design something. It is usually a lot of fun. The students develop a variety of 21st century skills like communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. But how about the content? How can our STEM lessons promote content understanding as well as the skills? STEM kids listen, develop content understanding by situating the learning in the real world context. In our first step, Kaujai Panha, or focusing on the problem, students find out about the impact of the issue. They find out why they need to know about this content. The second step is Suksaha Tang, or explore existing solutions to the problem. It is here that our good old scientific inquiry investigations can be integrated. The students can also learn from reading selected articles or search from the internet for background knowledge related to the solution. In the third step, Sang San Praplian, students are challenged to create new solutions or improve on existing ones. This is where they apply their content knowledge to create a better solution. They get to innovate with their friends Students have meaningful conversations discussing STEM contents. They also practice and improve different skills, describing their ideas in words and in pictures, presenting to their friends. They justify their ideas, listen to evaluate other ideas, and work on improving them. They will also learn that not all ideas will be a success. They will learn to fail and then to try again. Students develop growth mindset, so critical for their future success in innovation economy. Then we come to the fourth part, Saton Hien Saton Kit, or reflection on the learning. Many STEM activities conclude with the results of the challenge, cheering to the winning team and crapping around. We want to go further. So in the last part of our STEM Kids lessons, we ask students to reflect on their learning. This can be answering a few questions, discussion on a topic, writing to your future self, creating a Facebook post, thinking about a related STEM career. There are many ways you can get the student to reflect. Please make time for students to reflect on the content they have learned and review the skill that they have grown. So, where does computational thinking fit into all this? Coding or computer programming is writing a set of instructions that computer can understand to program or to tell the computer to perform a task. Everybody should learn to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. We want to integrate computational thinking into our STEM lessons. We want to enhance students' thinking skills, and we want to do that in context. The first set of STEM Kids lesson was developed under the theme Creating for the Changing World. The computational thinking skills will be foundational to our future innovators. The kids today will solve the world's problems tomorrow. Computational thinking plays an important part in STEM Kids lessons. In Storm Chasers, Students create a flowchart to characterize a storm using a series of yes or no questions about the storm origin and the maximum wind speed. Before they create the flowchart, we build their skills using a board game where students solve a problem by designing and asking yes or no questions. The students think they are playing, but actually, 
they are growing computational thinking skills. Then put these skills to use when they decide a process to characterize a storm. In HEAT XProBot, we design several computational thinking integration points. In this lesson, students started by exploring occurrence of heat waves across different places and through time from the past to the future. Students again play with data models, trying to make sense of the data and make decisions based on the projection from the different data models. We ask the students to look at the historical trends of the heat waves and deadly heat days from the past to present and then look at the projection of the deadly heat days in different areas when we take no action with medium mitigation and with strong mitigation. Data is the new oil. In the future, if you have data and can understand data, then you can power up anything. Information can be extracted from data, just as energy can be converted from oil. This is why students should learn with data. In HeatWave XProBot, students design a process to collect temperature data over different color surfaces. They then go out in the sun, take the measurements and realize for themselves the challenges of working in extreme environments. We then shift very naturally and challenge students to design a robot that can collect temperature data for us so that we can stay in the shade. We use paper coding for students to decide how the robot moves. If you don't have high-tech robot in your classroom, don't worry. Coding is the important part. Online teacher training under STEM Kids project uses hands-on screens on interactive approach. We also use a model that we call with the nickname Mango Sticky Rice Model. The participating teachers switch between instructor's perspective and learner's perspective through the session. Like when you have mango sticky rice, some bikes you have sticky rice, and some bikes you have mangoes. It is imperative for STEM teacher training to use hands-on approach. And when we conduct training so live, it is very important that the screen should be on as well to encourage maximum interactions and maximize sharing and co-learning. Online training can be really powerful. Participants several hundred kilometers away can draw a notation real-time on the same diagram. We can collect temperature data from the North, East, South and Central Thailand simultaneously. There are many cool tech tools to use in the classrooms. But the good practice that we learn is to really spend a good amount of time figuring out the tool and immediately put the tool to use in training activities. There is no use just mentioning the tech tools and hope the teachers will explore in their own time. We know that the teachers are busy with their important work. We must go deep, not just spreading a mile wide and an inch deep, as they say. Reflection is important, not only for the students. The process is critical in teaching training as well, and even more so for online training. When we introduce the STEM Kids lesson to the teacher in our online training, the first part, we will look at the lessons wearing a teacher's hat. We look at the learning objectives together. We review the alignment with the national standards. We look at key features like learner engagement strategies, assessment, technology use, and skill integrations, including computational thinking skills. Then we go through the activities like we are students, following the progression of their learning before returning at the end to think about the whole experience as a classroom teacher again and now taking into account of different and diverse classroom contexts. We can discuss possible adaptations of the STEM Kids lessons for students with different learning abilities for schools with different tech readiness or learners with limited reading or math literacy, for example. A whole day training in front of the screen can be tiring. So please make sure you sit correctly and drink plenty of water. We also have regular breaks and check-in to keep the energy level high. Meaningful learning happens when students make connections, explain their idea, create, fail, 
improve, remix, reuse, and have a good time. And it's the same for the teacher too.